All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be covering Google Shopping and exactly how I set it up uh, to make ridiculous returns. We're going to be going inside some of my live accounts and I'm going to be showing you some strategies I've been implementing, but mainly this is going to be the blueprint of how to start and launch your Google Shopping campaign. I'm going to be going over the apps, uh, the strategy we're going to be using, and of course, we're going to be utilizing, of course, part one and part two, but this part three, this video right now, is what's going to bring it all together. So it's really important. It's going to be pretty in depth, and it's exactly what I'm doing to start literally new products as we speak. So uh, let's get into the content. Oh, oh, wait, wait wait guys I actually opened up a private Facebook group that is completely free and so I'm gonna go over that in a little bit but I'll have resources in that private Facebook group um, to kind of go along with this video and one of it is gonna be a uh, negative keyword list and some other things that's really gonna help you with Google and also other uh, other things as well but besides that I want to get into the content because there's a lot to cover all right guys we're in the computer and like always, I want to show you guys proof before we start. So uh, this is actually one of my accounts that I started uh, earlier last year and ran into this year that actually really crushed it. It actually did over a million dollars in sales in the year. Uh, really good, 4.28 ROAS, um, spent over $100,000. This one right here. So this is the product I was kind of talking about in my other videos. And I just, it is so profitable. Um, it's starting to make around anywhere from 300, 400, sometimes $800 a day net profit. So um, not all the conversion value is attributed because I'm also doing retargeting with Facebook ads. So this is super profitable. And then, and then here's another account. This is actually for a mutual friend and uh, we kind of exchanged services, but you could see that this is already going really well. This was in the last 19 days and already $18,000 in revenue with over a 10 return on ad spend, which is amazing. So I wanna show you kind of what I'm doing to basically take this, these results and just replicate it over and over and over. Um, it's a very easy, simple process now that I've kind of streamlined and it just works. It just works over and over. So now the first thing that we're gonna get into is actually the product that we'll be kind of doing this with. Now I had a couple options because I did a lot of like research um, this product, which I actually didn't mind, it was an underground metal detector. The reason why I liked it is because I saw that there's a lot of high price points and I could get one for what looked to be about $99. And so that was really good. But there's one that I want to do because it was just so funny. Uh, and it's this one, an electric wheelchair. And so this seems absolutely ridiculous. But so the reason why I like this is for a couple things. Um, you can see that the search volume right here is almost 50,000 people searching a month for electric wheelchair. Another thing that I really liked is this, because you can see that you can get one for $1,300 and people are selling it for about $2,000. So your profit margin, if you sell it for just a little bit under, uh, is ridiculous. I mean, you could have a $500 profit margin uh, just by kind of undercutting a little bit. And there's so much search volume that truthfully, I mean, it just, it looks like a great option. And so this is something I would look into now. Personally, I, I usually actually do low ticket items. So I don't expect you guys to go and just, everyone just go copy this and just go all out. This is something I found in about 30 minutes of searching. But it's just a funny example that I want to show you guys. But the process is the same. When you find a really good product, this is literally one-to-one -one what I would do. Now, what we also want to do is make sure that this product is actually high quality. Now, you can see I actually went through the reviews. It is a good quality product. Um, some people just complained about, like, it's the tire popping or something, um, which is fine. So another thing that I actually liked is that the shipping to the U.S., it, it's the estimated delivery is 10 days. So um, if you were to drop ship this, it's literally in 10 days, it'll get there. So I think that's really cool. But aside from that, then really the most important thing is making sure that you have a product that is meeting the criteria of lower competition, not completely saturated, because once again, you are kind of, you're literally right next to the competition. Now, like I said in the other modules, having a really good high converting landing page is what is going to save you and I've I've done this with lower ticket items around $30 and I had people right next to me almost at half the cost and I've been beating them and so 
uh, the way you do it is kind of what I explained in those last videos. But nonetheless, if you have less competition, it's easier. And so it's more beginner friendly. So this is really good that we found something that we like. Now the next step is to set up our Google Shopping ads, right? And so I'm gonna be taking you guys through that process. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're inside the ad account right now, and this is a fresh ad account, so you'll probably see this if you haven't been running any ads. What we wanna do is new campaign. Now, we're gonna go ahead without a guidance, and we're gonna be going to shopping. So we're gonna need a couple things. So we're gonna need to actually create a merchant center, which is by far the easiest thing to do inside of Shopify. I'm gonna show you the app that I use, and then we need to select the country. So, one sec. So, this is the app I use. It's called the Google Shopping Feed, and I believe it's free. Yeah, so unless you have over six products, it's free. Um, and if you don't, then it's $2.99 a month, so it's very affordable, and this literally is the app I'm using for now all of my stores and it works really well the reason why I like it is because if you actually look over here we can edit literally all of the titles without changing the titles on the Shopify store and the reason why that's important is because what I'm gonna be showing you guys is really how to rank and get as much traffic as possible but what that means is that your titles of your product like the literally the title of the product is gonna be very long you do not want to have a super confusing long title on your product page because it just kind of looks spammy but you do want to have that on um, a Shopify listing because truthfully Google only shows pretty much half of your title anyway so people can't see the other you know 40 words that you have inside of your listing but that is what's going to help you rank for a various amount of traffic and so this is a really good app and one of the only ones that allows you to kind of separate those two and so before we can move any further what we need to know is how exactly or what exactly we're gonna try to show up for if we are selling this product and so the most important thing is actually to do a little bit of keyword research and so I already did that right now so I'm gonna show you kind of what I do and how I lay it out because um, I actually do it in an Excel sheet, so let me show you that right now. Okay, so you can see right here on the left side we have a handful of terms. Your goal is to find as many search terms that equal the search volume of at least 20,000 to 30,000 searches a month. And the reason why is because you want at least some kind of impression share and some chance to you know, get four, five, 20 sales a day, um, depending of course on the price of your product. Now for this, I mean, if you're selling a $2,000 product, I mean, if you get one sale a day, that's really good. Um, for me, for another high ticket product, I'm bouncing anywhere from three to four sales a day, which is great because my net profit is about $500 a day. And I don't have to do anything. I literally, like, I do nothing. Um, and I like that because with Google Shopping, the only thing that happens with Google Shopping is your ad gets better. It gets better and better and better the longer you have it. So for example, if I was to type in electric wheelchair here, you could see that we have you know some sellers, but there's not much. Like it only seems like there's two sellers um, kind of taking up these listings. And this is something that I like to see. Now, like I said, I just want to reiterate, I do not usually go for high ticket products. I usually go for lower ticket. Um, this is just an example, and I suggest you guys do go for lower ticket products just because it's easier to see traction. Um, one thing I will say is that um, with Google, it's it doesn't always track every single conversion accurately. So like, you know, with lower ticket products, it's okay if it misses one or two conversions, but with higher ticket, I, I know it, it can get a little bit scary when you don't see a conversion, and then but you do see a sale and you don't know where it came from. So just something to look out for. But I like how, I just like the way this looks. Like visually, you know, I've had a lot of experience with this and this does look good. Um, now once again, I haven't looked into this product too much, but I do like the way this looks. And then 49,000 searches a month um, is a really good start. And of course what I did was I put in different variations of this keyword. So basically you wanna have different variations of you know your product and your keyword because you wanna kinda show up for what people are searching for. And the more you kinda show up for different variations, you can see the profitable ones and the ones that aren't profitable. And I'll be showing you guys kind of um, how you can segment those and quickly get to profitability because one of the biggest things is that when you first launch this, you might show up for a bunch of terms, but you'll see a bunch of terms that aren't profitable and then a handful that are. And so the quicker you can kind of see that and start adjusting inside of your account, the quicker you'll be able to scale and literally leave it on autopilot and uh, it'll be making you uh, good money. So if we go electric wheelchair, and then I also liked foldable because I think this is foldable. 
Okay, foldable electric wheelchair. Now, if you do end up going for uh, a really high ticket product, I would make sure that the shipping time is good. Um, for mine, my shipping time is really good. It's within five days. And so um, that's just something to keep in mind. If it's a lower ticket product, it's fine. I've had shipping times uh, really bad. I just, I, I've tried to make it better, but sometimes there's delays because I'm shipping from China. Um, but if you are selling higher ticket, you really got to go more in the US. Um, so this I really like, and you can see foldable electric wheelchair, 1,300 searches a month, and you're just playing this game of finding different keywords and finding different um, variations. So it's very simple, and literally once you have about 20,000 searches a month, boom, you have a green light check mark. So now all we have to do is create our shopping campaign. So now we're gonna go back in. Okay, so now we're back in the account. Now you can see that I have this blurred out because this is a live account. You'd wanna type in exactly where you're selling your products, and then it'll automatically try to choose smart shopping campaign. You do not want to choose that. I like the standard shopping campaign. This is when I've gotten all my results and you really want to be hands on. Um, so in the beginning, choose a standard shopping campaign and we click continue. Now for the campaign name, I always do top of funnel shopping. There is uh, a couple more strategies to do with shopping campaign, but that's only if you get some sales. So this is to make sure that we get sales, we're starting to get some traction, and then there is a couple other strategies we can do with shopping, but right now this is just to get you guys started, and this is by far exactly one-to-one -one what I do to get started. So when you get some results and you wanna kinda scale, don't think that that's the end-all be-all. There's a bunch of other things that you can do inside of Google, but this is the first step. And so if we look at our bid strategy, we wanna uncheck this and we wanna just keep it at manual CPC. The reason why is because we need to be in control. We need to literally baby the account for the first five days. It's gonna be very hands-on, it's gonna be very intensive, and it's gonna be a little bit of anxiety if you are on a tight budget, but I've made it work. I was on an extremely tight budget when I first started out. I literally had to make, I just, I couldn't you know, blow through 400 bucks and I made it work. And so I know you guys can make it work too if you kind of do the right strategy. So the budget, um, right now, you, you could, I get a lot of questions on this and truthfully, you could do anything you want. If you wanna do $5 a day, that's fine. But I, I would choose $50 because if you do a lot of research and you do a lot of you know, trying to figure out the right product and, and looking at the competitor kind of landscape, you should not be afraid to kind of spend a little bit. It's probably not even gonna spend the whole budget because it takes a while for Google shopping campaigns, it takes a while to even start ranking. You'll notice that, you know, in the first couple days you won't get any impressions because Google is still kind of like learning your product and is eventually gonna start kind of throwing you in some spots. Now, if you get clicks and people actually land on your landing page and they stay and they don't bounce, Google is gonna give that a check mark and be like, okay, we're gonna kinda of test the waters with this new seller. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the next thing that might seem confusing and what confused me is the campaign priority. So you wanna choose low. And you're gonna choose low for right now because it truthfully does not matter until you get more shopping campaigns. So like I was kinda of talking about previously, when you start setting up these shopping campaigns, there, there's a bunch of little strategies, but once you have like three shopping campaigns, you're gonna then eventually choose different campaign priorities. And what that's gonna do, when you're putting in budget in each campaign, it's gonna give kind of priority on which one's gonna rank more or less. And so um, right now, you're literally just doing one campaign, so it doesn't matter if you do camp campaign priority low or high, because there's no other campaigns. And then for location, so, if you are drop shipping, then choose you know the big five um, as far as your location. If you are just shipping out of the US, you probably don't wanna pay the international um, fee and it's too confusing. I've done this. Um, your conversion rate is gonna be so different. Say if you get orders from Australia versus um, United States because to ship international, if you're shipping from the US, it's just uh, expensive. And so most people do not want to pay, you know, $15 for international shipping. So the location options, if you do just decide to do, let's just say United States and Canada, I would put in as well, New Zealand, Australia, right? And then location options, um, this is something I've been testing and personally I've been sticking with this now forever, is people in or regular in, regularly in your targeted locations. Um, this is just gonna make sure that you're literally just targeting people in those locations. And then I choose people in your excluded location. So um, that's really good. And then we just save and continue. And this is where we get to the good stuff. So 
uh, we are gonna do just one individual product and then our ad group name can just be top of funnel shopping one and it really I mean it truthfully doesn't matter we could always change it and then our bid I like to start with 75 cents if you want to be super conservative you can easily start with 50 cents um, that's totally fine and then just kind of see all right am I getting any impressions and if not then no problem you just go up to 75 cents you wait a day see if you're getting any impressions and clicks if not then you raise the bid a little bit so then we click save all right guys, so we got all of our products in. The next thing that we are gonna have to do is actually separate it by ID. And so what I mean by that, and it's gonna be a little bit blurred, but it's okay. So I'm gonna click right here. What we're gonna have to do is actually, we're gonna go down here, item ID, and we're gonna click all. And the reason why is because we need to have all of our IDs in one kind of row. So let me just show you. And the reason why is because I wanna bid individually on each product. Now, if you only have one product, fine, that's that's totally okay. But if you have two, three, four, five products, you wanna bid up and down on different products. Some products will do better than others. Sometimes you'll have all your products do great, but it's important to bid differently on these. Now, this is really good. We pretty much set up our shopping campaign. Now, what we skipped and what we didn't do is how are you actually gonna create your listing? One of the most important things is actually how to um, structure your title and your description. So let me show you. All right guys, so now we are inside that app that I recently showed earlier in this video, and this is the app that's gonna allow us to change the titles. So this is where the titles will be, and some things will be blurred out in here because this is one of my other accounts. And so uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I structure my titles in order to get the most uh, impression share. This is actually very important and very simple actually. So um, if you notice over here, so over here we have our terms, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna have our top term that's gonna get the most impression first, our second uh, top term that's gonna get the second most impression second, and so on. And so what we wanna do is we literally will just we'll copy all of these and make sure they're in order. So we want electric chair, uh, lightweight electric chair, wheelchair. Uh, no, we do not want electric chair. <laughs> but you guys get the point, right? And so that is what we're gonna do to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over and boom. So we have it right here, and this is not gonna be changed on our product page, it's only gonna be changed on our feed. And then for your description, this is also really important. You wanna make sure you have a really good, enticing, kind of a lengthy description. You wanna sprinkle in different keywords. You do wanna do some of the tactics I was talking about earlier. It just really helps rank your product. You wanna seem like you're super relevant for that term. And so um, I'm just gonna put in uh, a description, but this is exactly what you do, and then you publish, now, after you submit the title and description, it will then talk to Shopify and Google and the Merchant Center, and it'll all be updated. And so every time you change this title, it'll be updated. And so you can really kind of change the title to, to where it, you're showing up for the most profitable terms and making sure that you're the most relevant in those terms as well. And uh, you can kind of just play that game that way. Now, guys, the, the next thing I want to show you is one of the more important things that it's, it's either if you don't do this, you're not gonna be profitable. And it's having a negative keyword list right from the start. Uh, it's very important because having your negative keyword list is what's gonna tell Google what to not show you up for. Things like you know, phone number, support, free, Amazon, Walmart. Like things that if people type those in, you do not want your um, listing to show up whatsoever. And so this is where, if you look right here, this is exactly where you're gonna add in your negative keyword. We're gonna go to keyword, we're gonna go negative keyword, and we're gonna add in a new list. Now, on this video, I'm gonna have actually a Facebook group that I've literally just created, um, really because this is a very different concept of how to do drop shipping, how to create a brand. So I wanted to create a group that is different with like-minded people. And so in that group, I'm gonna have a couple resources. One of them will be a negative keyword list that I use for literally all of my campaign. Uh, the group is free, it's completely free, um, but that will really help you guys get started. It's a simple list and you could just copy and paste and it's exactly what I use for all of my campaigns. And um, yeah, so with that being said, this is exactly what I do to set it up. Now, a little bit from day you know, three to five, what you wanna do is yes, you wanna manage it and make sure that it's profitable. How much do you spend? How much do you kind of twinker with the ads or whatever? I understand that's a kind of a pain point and confusing, so I wanna to try to simplify it. 
if you need to take the margin of your product and you need to spend the entire margin of your product regardless for at least the first and second day. So if your margin is let's just say 30 bucks and you spend 30 bucks on your shopping campaign and you have absolutely no sales, that's okay. I would actually let it run the very next day and spend half the margin. And also what I would do is if you look right here, if I click on search terms, all these search terms are gonna pop up for what I'm showing for, but this is just a live account, but I've showed this before in my other video. You need to then go and kind of play that game of making sure that you're not showing up for non-profitable keywords. So you can do it immediately from the beginning by using this negative keyword list and on top of it, um, pretty much using common sense. Like if you're showing up for things that aren't even relevant, like just weird terms, you need to immediately put that in a negative keyword list. But as you start moving along, you'll start getting more and more profitable. Now, if for whatever reason you're running your campaign and let's just say you're not getting any sales or it's just not profitable, then that's okay, then maybe it's the product. Um, I, I usually don't have too much of that problem personally. Uh, I, I can't lie, I mean, I, I usually do a lot of research up front. Research is super important. It's really all about the product, your landing page, and making sure you're showing up for relevant terms. I literally I put those all together and I still I've yet to have a, a really bad, you know, shopping campaign. Usually I'll have it be bad in the first couple days as far as it's just showing up for weird terms and then after that it's profitable and I immediately make money every single day. So it's just you got to find the right product like kind of how I was showing you but don't be crippled by the doubt of it not being the right product if that makes sense you got to test and you'll start understanding how this game works you'll start understanding the pattern and I think you'd be even surprised that even something that seems saturated it will still sell um, I can't really tell you exactly why it'll sell but it will sell um, and if it doesn't sell, that's okay. Try three other products because uh, it, it, this method definitely works. So regardless, guys, I hope this helped. I'm going to be releasing more videos into this. Join the Facebook group if you're interested. And I think the next video, I'm actually going to be showing you a new store that I just launched. And guys, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, that's uh, unacceptable. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.